sociopath? Where? Ah! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm gonna stop because that kind of hurts my hand. Basically what that signified, it meant that the eight part documentary series on Jake Paul by Shane Dawson is done and dusted, completely finished. The series was not perfect by any means whatsoever. We're gonna get into that very shortly. But if you look at the series from part one to part eight, it was very entertaining. It was like a reality show. It was a documentary. It was a PSA. It was like One Punch Man. It was like all the great forms of entertainment sort of put together with a little bow on top. Uh... Now I just want to touch on all the previous parts very briefly because they've been out for ages and everybody's talked about them to death. So I'm just going to just brush over it before we get to the actual juicy parts that were, I guess, part six, seven, and eight. Let's start with part number one. Part number one or act one as uh, us film students call it. I have a degree in film, sorry. What about it? Weird flex, I know. Part one was a, it was a necessary part in the story because Shane Dawson really didn't know about Jake Paul. He didn't understand Team 10. He hadn't followed the drama. He legitimately just had no idea. So he had to go and research and learn some stuff that he didn't know just so he actually had stuff to talk about and ask people and you know, blah, blah, blah. Nothing new was really uncovered. Uh, it was it was stuff that had already been touched on before by people in the internet community. So we didn't really learn anything new. Um, it was just Shane learning about stuff. It was a vital cog in the machine that was this series, um, but didn't really get a whole lot from it like as an audience, I think. Personally, you could have taken this, I think it was 45 minutes. I think you could have taken that clip and you could have just reduced it down to maybe 10 minutes because all you really needed to do in that part was to say, hey, who's Jake Paul? Oh, here he is. Uh, what does he do? Oh, he does this. Uh, why do people hate him? Oh, they hate him because of this. That's it, simple. Again, done and dusted. You didn't need it to be 45 minutes. So straight away, I think we started off on a bad footing. Like the episode was fine. Like there was nothing as far as the quality goes that said it was awful, but you really didn't need it to be that long. Could have just, as I said, now part two was more of the same. Uh, part two was the most meme worthy and also the most criticized episode of the series. I had Shane go and sit with the, the therapist, whatever her name was, Katie, Katie, Katie. Katie, her name's Katie. They sat down, they had a chat because Shane wanted, he asked himself the question. He, he posed the question to himself, his audience and the therapist, is Jake Paul a sociopath? Now, one of the big critiques of this episode was the fact that it was very overly dramatic, like to the point where it was made out to be like a low budget horror movie, which I don't mind because I'm a big horror movie fan, but it, it just appeared really hokey, really corny, really just cheesy, which it didn't really need to be. I get that it's meant to be entertaining, uh, but I don't think it went about it the right way in saying that I did still enjoy it. The two big critiques of this episode, well, one of them was the fact that they seemed, Shane and the, the therapist, they seemed to be kind of self-diagnosing people in a way. I think that is a bit of a stretch in some instances, but they were sort of talking about, oh, this is what a sociopath does. And then it would cut to a clip of this celebrity doing this and this and this and this. And so instantly audiences are gonna like put one and one together and say, oh, okay, so this guy, uh, you know, he, he yelled at a photographer. So does that mean he's a sociopath? Or this guy parked in a parking space illegally. Does that mean he's a sociopath? So there was a lot of, a lot of you know, loose diagnosis going on. You know, very, very loose, like loose, like, <laughs> Second one was the fact that they seem to really blur the lines between what a sociopath and what a psychopath are. So they made a sociopath out to be like an axe murderer. Like, like Jason Voorhees is a sociopath. And that was done through the music, it was done through the editing, it was done through just Shane's like... <gasps> reactions when he heard the word sociopath and the, the therapist was like, oh, a sociopath, uh, they, they don't, they put uh, milk in their cereal first and Shane was like, oh. But yeah, they really made it seem like a sociopath and a psychopath, like, like a murderer, like, like someone who would set a building on fire, a building filled with children and kittens and Pokemon merchandise, made them out to be the same thing. And that 
not only confused people, it made people look at people in their daily lives and say, oh, oh, uh, yeah, sociopath. Mm, yeah, sociopath, uh, uh, sociopath, sociopath, uh, sociopath, uh, mm, 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 psycho, mm, no, no, you're both. You're actually both, sorry. Uh, and so that did cop a lot of flack in the YouTube community, which was fair enough, it was very warranted. Uh, the fact that it was overly dramatized, I really didn't mind too much. It was just the actual content was a bit sketchy. Same argument as episode number one, you could have, condensed what was there, made it a bit more cohesive, just sort of touch on it, touch on a few points, move on. I think what you could have done is you could have taken episode one, two, three, take 20 minutes out of each, mash them all together, make a 60 minute long part one, and then sort of move on. I think that would have been a lot more entertaining. I think that would have made less work for Shane Dawson, so he'd be less stressed. Now we move on to part number three. Now part number three was kind of pointless. Part three was easily the lowest point of the series because nothing really happened. The wheels were just turning and turning and turning and you were just like, oh, come on, let's move on. Let's do something fun. Let's find out something interesting. We kind of knew that Greg Paul was a massive dick and we kind of knew that Logan Paul was the problem child. Like Jake Paul is like the, the misbehaving sort of, you know, little brat. And Logan is like the actual kid who like does the graffiti and steals things, you know. I'm not saying you did, uh, but he's that kind of kid. He's the actual bad kid, whereas Jake is just the younger kid who's like acting up to get attention. And that's basically what this episode covered. It covered the fact that these two had just been in competition for their whole life and their dad has said, you guys have to compete. You guys have to like dear, find out which one is better. And the mom was just like in the background doing nothing. And Jake basically lived his whole life just trying to be better than his brother. Uh, and a lot of that has followed through their whole life. It's followed them to Hollywood, it's followed them to YouTube. They just want to be better than each other. And it sort of creates a really toxic sort of energy between the two, which it's gonna get a whole lot more toxic than that, let me tell ya. So again, it really didn't tell us all that much, but not a whole lot that we didn't know anyway. It could have. Now part four, part four is where it really started to pick up. That's where it got really, really juicy. We got some goss. We got some deets, we got some other stuff. We got a big mansion. It was great. I loved it. I love part four. Part four was probably the first time in the series where I was like, oh, whoa, holy moly. I actually learnt something that is just blowing my mind. So Shane goes to a Nick Crumpet, Nick Crumpet's house. Oh, house, it's a mansion. It's a, it's a house on top of a house, on top of a house, on top of a house. So he went there, they had a little chat. Uh, long story short, basically Nick confirmed a whole lot of internet theories slash rumors slash already reported on things that like Team 10 is a cult and they just take you in, take all your money, sign you up, give you no freedom. Also confirmed that all the pranks are fake, all the pranks towards the Nick Coletti twins. <laughs> <laughs> hello. <laughs> All the pranks directed towards them, 100% fake, which, hello, der Fred. It just kind of revealed what fame and money and views and that pressure to constantly create content and be the biggest channel on YouTube, it just kind of showed what that pressure does to someone. Turned Jake Paul into just a complete tyrant. He was very restrictive. He didn't allow people to do stuff. He was like, you know, I own you. You're my slave and I'm your massa. Yeah, and it just showed that he was just a just a powerful, vindictive kind of dictator, I guess. He was a cult leader. He was literally a cult leader. He would sign people up, he would say, you can't leave, I get most of your money, without me you're nothing, which you kind of turned out to be true. Because it also revealed that once people left, they sort of stabbed Jake in the back. It does bring about a lot of trust issues. You never know when someone's gonna stab you in the back. You don't know when it's gonna come from, especially from someone you really like. And the biggest bombshell of all, the biggest revelation was the fact that the Logan Paul, uh, Alyssa Violet fling, the sexual encounter was 100% true. That actually happened. Uh, it just caused Jake Paul to just lose all hope in humanity, basically. But Alyssa got kicked out of the Team 10 house. Jake held a grudge against Logan ever since, but never really confronted him on it besides all those corny little diss tracks. Because that's, that's your family. Like, you don't expect your family members to do something as rotten and as disgusting as that. But hey, Logan Paul, the actual sociopath, I guess he did. And this is where the series really steered away from, is Jake Paul a sociopath? Because Shane asked the question to Nick Crumpet, and Nick basically said, no, no, I don't think he's a sociopath. And that was it. 
So the documentary in general after that point really sort of closed off the narrative of is Jake Paul a sociopath and it just moved on to see well, why why is Jake Paul hated? What was his situation with Logan? For good because it really didn't have a whole lot of legs after the fact that it was revealed that Jake was not a sociopath. Now part five and part six, it was like MTV Cribs on steroids. Shane just finally met up with Jake, went through the, the, the new Team 10 house. I guess that's what it is. They went for like a, a ride in a Jeep thing. They did stuff, they looked at his merch store. So it was relatively uneventful. Um, it was very interesting because we actually saw Jake Paul on camera, but not playing the character, I guess. Like it was just him. It was him interacting with a normal, I guess normal, normal person in a relatively normal situation. He came across really awkward. Like he was like really afraid to say anything because he didn't know if that was gonna come back and bite him. But I actually kind of liked it. I think I preferred the actual real sort of, I guess, honest Jake Paul, as opposed to the YouTube character that's like, yeah, what's up, Team Ted? You know, blah, 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 prank, 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 blah, 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 blah. Part five and part six, it's it sort of just covered the fact that, oh, uh, you know, I, I was stabbed in the back by all these people. I don't trust anyone. Um, a lot of the stuff that I do is fake and is for views, which again, hello, like, no sugar. Once you get to part seven, that's when it really kicks off. Just confirmed a lot of the facts about uh, the Alyssa Violet Logan Paul situation. She said, I was abused, I was treated like shit, blah, blah, blah. And there was a there was an instance where I made a lapse of judgment, I acted out, but I kind of wanted revenge on Jake Paul anyway. Can't really blame her for that because you hear about the stuff that she was put through, you hear about the stories, you, you see the kind of stuff that happened to her, you see the way she was treated, and you can't really hate on her. I know there was a lot of hate on her online, but at the very end of the day, she was like treated like shit. She was, you know, emotionally tormented. You know, she was taken for a ride. She didn't know where she stood with Jake. So the whole situation, their whole living scenario was just completely messed up. So the fact that she, she acted out, I guess, and she wanted some form of revenge, can't really hate on her too much. She's just doing what any scorned person would do, I guess. Uh, what she actually did was kind of messed up. Um, but again, that's more on Logan and not on her because she is not family. She's not family. She might have known him for a while, but she's not family. Logan Paul is family. What he did to his family member is pretty disgusting. It's pretty gross. Family are some of the last people you'd expect to do stuff like that. But apparently, uh, Jake Paul's family, not very nice. Full of idiots, full of sociopaths. There's that word again. And so at the very end of part seven, I kind of was left with the feeling that, you know what, Jake Paul did some rotten stuff. He's, he's been, a, it's been a terrible person at times. He's done really dumb, stupid, idiotic things, which you can't excuse him for. Nothing in this documentary is gonna exonerate him from the things that he's done. But it kind of puts everything in perspective of the fact that, you know, this is kind of like, this is the neglected kid at the end of the day. This is the kid that was always taught that he was not good enough. He, he, his, he was always living in his brother's shadow. His dad just provided no emotional support at all. He had no support network. He was just forced to sort of, you know, suppress all these feelings and just move on. And in turn, he's acted out and he's done things that he definitely regrets now. But I really don't hold that much against him. I actually feel kind of sorry for him because of the fact that, you know, he's had to deal with all these things. He's had to deal with his brother cheating on him with his missus. Oh, no, actually, sorry, the other way around. <laughs> Whoa, what a scandal that would be. <laughs> Part nine coming up. Good thing is he's finally showing some humility. He's actually, he's actually acting like a person, like a proper human being. It's part eight, the finale, massive episode, but unlike part one, two, and three, I don't think this needed to be reduced or compressed in any way. I think it was, I think it was great the way it was. Jake sort of opened up on camera for the first time ever. Like the fact that we were seeing that Jake Paul compared to like team 10 prank Jake Paul was just the fact that Shane Dawson could get that out of him, provide him with that level of comfort where he can actually open up in front of a camera, which is gonna be viewed by millions of people, millions if not billions. The fact that he could do that takes massive cojones. It really made you feel sorry for Jake Paul and all the stuff he's had to put up with and just how he's never been able to deal with it properly. It was quite sad, but at the very end of it, I was left feeling like, you know what? 
I get this guy. I actually, I can see where he's coming from. He's a, he's a dick on YouTube, but in person, he's had a lot of demons he's had to deal with slash not deal with. Now, does this series completely exonerate Jake? Does it make everybody forget about all the dumb stuff that he's done, all the dumb shit that he's said? No. Does it make me think that he's a bit more of a better person now than he was a couple of years ago? Yes. There are a few criticisms that I have of part eight. Uh, there was one thing that I really think that he should have addressed and drilled Jake on further. Shane didn't really throw softball questions, but he really didn't follow up on a lot of questions. Um, I really wanted him to address why Jake and his team sort of set up FaZe Banks to, to be this guy that assaulted Jake's assistant. Why did that whole situation happen in the first place? Why has it taken so long for Jake to finally delete the video where he was like, oh yeah, look, look at my assistant's bruises, you know, this guy beat her up and blah, blah, blah. Why did that take so long? I don't really understand. Uh, he did delete that video on camera, which was like, oh yeah, it was nice, but why did it take so long? Why did he not do it before? So that was one thing that really bothered me, the fact that he didn't sort of go in harder on that and finally get to the truth. And the second one was when Jake was kind of talking about how people criticize him for preying on little kids to try and get them to buy his merchandise. And he was like, oh, you know, if, if you think that I'm just trying to pry on kids, you know, you're just a hater, that's a fucked up thing to say. But he really kind of is. Like the fact that his videos are like infomercials for the, the Jake Paul product. Like there are so much product placement and advertising and pushing people to buy, buy, buy. And if you do that enough, people are just gonna buy stuff. Like that's just how marketing works. If you just chuck it in their face and just keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, that's what's gonna happen. And that's what has happened. And so the fact that Shane didn't actually say, you know what, it's kinda, it kinda is what you're doing. That is what you're doing. Look at your videos. You are literally prying on kids who don't really know better and you're just putting a big shiny toy in front of them and saying, hey, you want this? You want this? Come and get it, bye, bye, bye. So that part kind of annoyed me. Um, but I think part eight in general is more about Jake finally opening up and revealing his true feelings. And he actually nearly cried for a bit. So I was like, oh, bless you, bless you child. Bless you very rich, privileged child. But yes, in closing, it was all very good. I enjoyed the series as a whole. That's it. Those are just my thoughts on this uh, little series. Uh, if you liked this video, if you thought that I was poignant and charismatic and beautiful, uh, feel free to drop a comment below. Make sure you like the vid. Share the channel with your friends. If you're new to the channel, make sure you pa 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 That means subscribe in Young New Lamish. Yeah. See ya.